Good day class and welcome back to Science, Technology and Society. Ngayong araw, pag-uusapan natin ang lecture number 4 entitled Human Flourishing and the Good Life. Again, I am your professor, Professor Ryo Jerome C. Tuzon and this will be the first lesson after the prelim exam and the first lesson in the midterm part of the semester. Now, before we talk about human flourishing and the good life, let's try to reflect on the following questions. First and foremost, what makes you happy? Anong nagpapasaya sa'yo? As a person, as a family member, as a young professional, as a member of a digital society, anong nagpapasaya sa'yo? Yung makita ba yung mga mahal mo araw-araw? Uh, yung mga bagong laro na lumalabas sa cellphone, yung mga masasarap ba na pagkain na nararanasan o na nakukuha mo sa araw-araw, o yung makita si crush sa kada umaga or kada araw. Next, which matters to you more, health or wealth? Anong mas mahalaga para sa'yo? Kalusugan ba o kayamanan? Pag-isipan niyo mabuti kung anong mas mahalaga. Mas mahalaga ba na may pera ka? O mas mahalaga ba na kahit wala masyadong pera pero healthy naman at mukhang nagsusurvive naman sa araw-araw na gawain? And lastly, what is your basis to say someone is prosperous? Paano mo masasabi na isang tao ay marangya o maunlad na ang buhay? Diba? Paano mo masasabi Kung ang isang tao ay eh masagana na, ay eh mayaman na, ay eh successful na sa buhay. Diba? Masasabi mo ba yun pag may bahay at lupa na ba siya? Masasabi mo ba yun kung may pamilya na ba siya? Masasabi mo ba successful na isang tao kung promoted siya sa trabaho niya ng pinakamataas sa posisyon? Try to think of your answers for each of these questions as we go forward our lesson for today. And we talk about the idea of eudaimonia. Eudaimonia in literature means human flourishing. A contented state of being happy and healthy and prosperous. Yan ang bagong salita na pag-uusapan natin today. Ang, sal- ang salitang eudaimonia. Ito daw ay isang estado o isang state wherein you are happy, you are healthy, and you are prosperous. But who exactly termed eudaimonia? Sino ba nagsabi ng salitang eudaimonia? Eudaimonia, eudaimonia actually originated <clears throat> by, uh, from Aristotle. Eudaimonia literally means good-spirited. It is a term by the Greek philosopher Aristotle in his work uh, Nicomachean Ethics in 385 to 323 BC to describe the high point of happiness that can be attained by humans. Ang eudaimonia daw, according kay Aristotle, ito yung highest point of happiness na pwede natin ma-attain as a human being. Ito yung pinakamataas at pinaka-ideal na happiness na ma- makukuha natin as a human being. Try to think of your happiness. Ano ba nagpapasaya sa'yo? Pag ba na-achieve mo yung nagpapasaya sa'yo, e eh magiging masaya ka na ba talaga? Kung hindi pa, mag ka pa or you will try to search for more happiness. And yung eudaimonia daw, yung nasa dulo, ng road na ito. Nasa dulo ng paglalakbay mo, ng paghahanap mo ng happiness. Yun ang eudaimonia. Kapag na-attain mo na lahat ng gusto mo ma-attain, na-attain mo ba lahat or nakuha mo na lahat na kailangan mo makuha para masabi mo na happy ka na, na contented ka na, yun ang state na yun. Eudaimonia ang tawag sa state na yun. Kapag sinasabi mo na happy na ako, contented na ako, wala na akong hihilingin pa, eh sinasabi ni Aristotle na eudaimonia, yung pakiramdam na yun. And lahat tayo as human beings, we are all achieving or we are all trying to reach eudaimonia. 
Yun kasi ang very definition ng buhay natin. Ang ma-achieve ang happiness. Kahit sino, tatanungin mo, lahat lang naman tayo ay gusto natin ay happiness. At yun ang magiging basis ng pag-uusapan natin ngayong araw na ito. Eudaimonia has often been translated into human flourishing. In, lit- in literature, likening humans to flowers achieving their full blooms. Kung ihantulad daw natin ang isang tao sa bulaklak, ang eudaimonia ay yung estado kung saan yung bulaklak eh nakabuka at nasa pinakamataas at pinakamagandang uh, portion ng kanyang buhay. Hindi nakasara kung hindi nakabuka at kitang kita mo yung mga vibrant colors sa mga bulaklak, yun daw ang eudaimonia kung ihahantulad natin sa tao. Aristotle's human flourishing arises as a result of different components such as phronesis or type of wisdom or intelligence, friendship, wealth, and power. According kay Aristotle, ang eudaimonia daw o ang human flourishing ay may apat na sources. Ang wisdom, friendship, wealth, and power. Kapag na-achieve daw natin, or itong apat na elements, kapag na-achieve mo yung pinakamataas na kailangan mo ma-achieve, dun ka lang makakakuha ng human flourishing o yung state of eudaimonia. And, according kay Rizudel, the very concepts of our happiness cannot be achieved without science. Plus yung eudaimonia, yung apat na elements na nagme-make up of eudaimonia cannot be achieved without science. Wisdom is from scientific refinements. Yung knowledge na meron tayo as an element of eudaimonia comes from scientific refinements. Friendship is not possible without language. Wealth is given by Uh, is given birth through scientific discoveries. Yung idea ng wealth nang galing lang naman yan sa pakikipagpalitan. And ano nga ba yung importance ng pakikipagpalitan? Nakadepende yun sa ginagawa mong trade. Di ba? Sa mga bagay na nakikipagpalitan ka. And yung mga bagay na yon they are given birth through science and technology. And lastly, power. Power was developed through the complexities of social, societal developments as a result of language. So lahat pala ito at lahat ng elements of eudaimonia comes from science. Now let's try to talk about wisdom first. Oh, let's try to talk about refining science. One crucial part or crucial element of achieving eudaimonia is wisdom. And wisdom is a source, or actually, ang wisdom ay yung knowledge na nakukuha natin sa buhay natin. Now, hindi naman nat- hindi lang to limited sa mga nababasa natin sa libro. Hindi lang to limited sa mga pinapakinggan natin mula sa ating professor. In fact, ang wisdom, it, it may come from your experiences as a person. It may come from indigenous knowledge or indigenous science na minamana natin mula sa mga ancestors natin and even sa mga karanasan na nararanasan natin sa buhay natin. Pero, class, ang wisdom, kahit anong source niyan, ay dumadaan sa term na tinatawag natin refining science. In refining science, there are two main theories involved. Class, again, lahat ng wisdom nang gagaling sa dalawang theory na ito. O sinasala sa dalawang theory na ito. First, the verification theory. It gives premium to empiricism and only takes into account those results which are measurable and experiments which are repeatable. Class, ang verification theory, ito yung theory na nag explain na yung wisdom na nanggagaling sa mga nararanasan natin sa ating five senses. For example, nakakita, nakikita natin yung sky. The sky is blue. One form of wisdom yan. Nakita natin na 
malamig ang yelo or naramdaman natin na malamig ang yelo. Therefore, ice is cold. One form of wisdom yan. Diba? Lahat na nakikita natin through our senses, they are verified or they are formed into wisdom using the verification theory. Dahil nakita natin, dahil naranasan natin, dahil napakiramdaman natin, napakinggan natin, nalasahan natin, lahat po yan ay wisdom through the verification theory. Nakita mo na, or napakinggan mo yung chika, o napakinggan mo yung gossip na may kinalat si friend X tungkol sa'yo. That's still a form of wisdom. Nakagawa ka ng idea or na, na-refine mo yung idea mo na hindi dapat pagkatiwalaan si friend X. And na-verify mo yun at naging wisdom yun para sa'yo dahil sa verification theory. Dahil nakita mo eh. Dahil napakaramdama mo. Dahil narinig mo. So wisdom can come from first verification theory. Mula sa ating five senses. Next. Falsification theory. Falsification theory talks about or does not promote ultimate adoption of one theory, but instead encourages research in order to determine which among the theories can stand the test of falsification. The strongest one is that which which is able to remain sustained amongst uh, amidst various tests, while be while being able to make particularly risky predictions about the world. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Una-una, balik tayo sa verification theory. Verification theory yung nararanasan natin using our five senses. Ang falsification naman, well, ang falsification theory naman natin, nanggagaling yan sa verification theory. For example, balik tayo sa example natin kanina. May nagsabi sa'yo o na, narinig mo na kinalat ni friend X ang isang bagay tungkol sa'yo. Now, verification theory. Di ba? Ibig sabihin, narinig mo eh. Ibig sabihin, totoo. Ngayon, tinanong mo si friend X. Friend X, totoo ba na may kinalat kang ganito? Ang sabihin ni friend X, hindi totoo to. Nagdi-deny siya. Hindi ko to kinalat tungkol sa'yo. Ngayon, paano to? Sina- narinig mo na kinakalat ni friend X yung isang bagay tungkol sa'yo. Pero nang tinanong mo si friend X, sinabi niya na hindi niya daw kinakalat. Kung verification theory lang ang meron tayo, malilito ka. Kasi may dalawang bagay. Kinonfront mo siya, sabi niya hindi, narinig mo, so alam mo totoo. Kaya pumasok si falsification theory. Si falsification theory, ito yung nagtitest kung aling theory or kung anong wisdom yung totoo at kung anong wisdom yung hindi totoo. Ngayon, tatanungin mo, sino nga ba yung kausap ni friend X no narinig mo na may kinakalat siya? Si friend Z, kung for example. Tatanungin mo si friend Z. Friend Z, si, totoo ba na sinabi ni friend X to tungkol sa akin? Sinabi ni friend Z, totoo daw. So, may dalawang, dalawang bagay ka or may dalawang evidence ka na nagsasabi na totoo. Pero si friend X lang yung nagsasabi na hindi totoo. Now, according kay falsification theory, yung strongest theory o yung strongest wisdom, yun yung magsistay at yun yung magiging totoo as a form of wisdom. Strongest wisdom in this case ay yung may kinalat nga sa'yo, si friend, eh, si friend X. Kasi may dalawa ka ng evidence, eh. narinig mo na, tapos tinanong mo si friend Z, alam mo na totoo. Alam mo na nagsisinawalay si friend X. Therefore, yung wisdom, yung totoong wisdom, ay eh nandoon. Eh yung, pa, eh yung una mong hinala, di ba? Okay, for example, sa uh, may hinala ka, o sa tingin mo, eh, <clears throat> nagchi-cheat sa'yo, yung boyfriend mo o yung girlfriend mo. Hahanap ka ng evidences, di ba? Hindi ka lang naman magbe-base on one theory. Hindi ka lang magbe-base sa porket pumunta siya sa lugar na to. At pumunta rin yung ex niya sa lugar na to, ibig sabihin, eh, nag, nag-cheat agad sa'yo. 
Siyempre, hahanap ka ng iba't ibang evidences that would prove you, that would test kung anong evidence o kung anong totoo sa hindi totoo. Yan ang falsification theory. Kaya meron tayong falsification theory. Kasi ang verification theory, it is not encompassing. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya sakop lahat ng wisdom na meron ang ating mga buhay. Ang verification theory, uh, it states na kung ano na, na, na perceive natin ng five senses, ito ang wisdom na makukuha natin. Pero that is not always the case. Minsan, kailangan mo gumamit ng falsification theory para malaman mo kung alin yung totoo at hindi totoong wisdom. Yan ang pinagkaiba ng dalawang theories na yan. Pero nonetheless, both of these theories gives us wisdom. And wisdom is a part of eudaimonia. The verification theory is a discipline in science if it can be confirmed or interpreted in the event of an alternative hypothesis being accepted. It is premium on empiricism. Empiricism meaning evidences. And it takes into account those results which are measurable and experiments which are repeatable. So sa verification theory, kung anong evidences using the five senses, these are wisdom that contributes to our eudaimonia. For example, may makikita tayo dito. Ano? Ano yung nasa harapan ninyo ngayon? Isa itong swan, di ba? O gansa yata sa Tagalog. And alam natin na swans are white. Nakikita natin eh. Andyan yung mata natin. Yeah? Verification theory gives us the information. At verification theory ang ginamit natin dito. Kasi gumamit tayo ng five senses. And eventually, meron tayong wisdom na swans are white. Yan lang ang verification theory. Now, falsification theory, as long as an ideology, ideology sorry, is not proven to be false and can best explain a phenomena over alternative theories, we should accept the said ideology. Pero, when we can no longer accept the ideology because of non-examples, because of examples that are not explainable using the verification theory, then we should change through research. Diba? It allowed the emergence of theories otherwise rejected by verification theory. It encourages research in order to determine which among the theories can stand the test of falsification. Gaya na example natin kanina, meron tayong tinatawag, tinatawag na test of falsification kung saan you would find other empiricist evidence that would prove kung ano yung dapat i-accept na ideology, kung ano yung dapat na i-accept na phenomena. Balik tayo sa example natin kanina. Meron tayong white swan, di ba? Or, o oh, tama, Meron, swans are white kasi nakakita tayo ng white swan. Now, that is true to a certain degree. Paano pag nakakita ka na ng black na swan? Kung verification theory ang pag-uusapan natin, sasabihin natin na, ah, hindi yan swan. Pero, kapag yuma, pero, limited kasi ang binibigay ng verification theory. Nagamit tayo ng falsification theory. Pareho sila ng ano, ng breeding habits. Nakakapag-breed sila sa isa't isa. Uh, pareho silang kinakain. Pareho sila ng lugar na pinupuntahan. Pareho sila ng asal. Pareho sila ng paraan kung paano na uh, nagre-reproduce. Pareho sila sa lahat ng bagay except sa kulay nila. Kung verification theory lang ang meron tayo, malilito tayo. Bakit, sir? Kasi sasabihin natin na hindi yan swan. Kasi hindi siya puti. Pero dahil sa falsification theory, it hones, it helps us understand the natural world better. Na swan din yan. Kasi lahat ng, lahat ng ibang bagay, lahat ng ibang evidences tells us that that is still a swan. 
ang pinagkaiba lang ay yung kulay. Now, according sa falsification theory, we can use lahat ng evidences na ito, lahat ng research na ito, to conclude the swans can be black or white. Yan ang pinagkaiba ng verification theory sa falsification theory. And those two theories are a part of our wisdom when it comes to eudaimonia in achieving human flourishing, in achieving happiness in life. Now, let's talk about the good life. In ancient Greece, long before the, world's, the word science has been coined, the need to understand the world and reality was guaranteed with the need to understand the self and the good life. Bago pa man tayo nagkaroon ng konsepto ng science, eh meron na tayong konsepto ng kaligayahan at kasayahan sa buhay. Pero, yung kaligayahan at kasayahan sa buhay, nanggagaling pa rin yun sa understanding of the world and the reality. For Plato, the task of understanding the things in the world runs parallel with the job of truly getting into what will make the soul flourish. Para kay Plato, ang pagkaintindi daw ng mundo natin, ang pagkaintindi ng natural world natin, ay eh kasama o parte ng idea na kung ano magpapaligaya sa atin. In an attempt to understand reality and the external world, man must seek to understand himself too. Kasi para maintindihan mo yung natural world, kailangan mo intindihin kung ano ka, kung anong gusto mo, kung anong nagpapaligaya sa iyo. Dahil ultimately, what you are seeking in seeking, uh, what you are searching in seeking you, daimonya, it is a part of the natural world. Never naghiwalay yung idea ng kaligayahan at ng explanation of the natural world. For example, ang idea mo ng kaligayahan eh ang magandang ba ang magandang bahay. Hindi mo mawawala doon yung idea ng good architecture. Hindi mo mawawala doon yung idea ng money, ng funds, ng budgeting. Yung ideas of science hindi mahihiwalay sa idea of a happy life. <clears throat> the good life. For Plato, this can be explained in postulating two aspects of reality. Two worlds, if you wish. The world of forms and the world of matter. The world of matter, things are changing and impermanent. The world of forms, the entities are only copies of the ideal and the models that are forms are the only real entities. According to Plato, meron tayong two forms and two worlds sa ating buhay. Hindi lang sa ating buhay, sa natural world. Meron tayong world of matter. Ito yung mga tangible na bagay, mga nahahawakan natin, mga nararanasan natin, mga napaperceive natin ng five senses natin. And meron tayong world of form. World of Forms. Class, ang World of Forms, ito yung mga kopya lang of the ideals. Mga kopya lang ng models. Ito yung mga essence ng real entities. Mag-usapan natin mamaya. However, Plato also claims that despite the reality of change, Things remain and they retain their ultimate to whatness. Class, kahit anong mangyari, kahit anong magbago, nandiyan pa rin yung ultimate to whatness, yung essence ng isang bagay. For example, yung isang mesa, kahit sirain mo, kahit putula mo ng paa, kahit sunugin mo, nandoon pa rin yung idea ng pagiging mesa niya. It's stableness. Same as happiness. Hindi po mababago yung idea ng happiness. Kahit anong mangyari, kahit anong baguhin, kahit magbago ang natural world, 
pare-pareho po tayong naghahanap ng happiness. According to Plato kasi, meron tayong dalawang world, dalawang idea. Meron tayong the world of ideas and the world of senses. For example, yung mga nakikita nating example or mga nakikita nating sa world of ideas natin, nandun yung pag-iisip natin kung anong itsura ng isang kabayo. ba? Diba? Nasa, nasa isip mo na eh kung ano yung kabayo. <coughs> Every horse that we encounter in the world around us is a lesser version of the ideal or perfect horse. Sa world of ideas, according kay Plato, nandito yung idea natin or nandito yung konsepto ng ideal horse. Pero in reality, in the world of senses, in the world of forms, lahat ng kabayo na makikita natin is only an example of our ideal horse. Sa bagay na nasa isip natin. Ganon din pagdating sa eudaimonia. Plus, yung nasa isip ninyo, in reality, hindi mo naman talaga ma-achieve in the world of senses. But instead, we can have an example, a situation that is like the world of ideas in our minds that would help us reach eudaimonia. In reality, we cannot achieve kung ano talaga yung idea, kung ano talaga yung world, world of ideals sa ating isipan. Instead, we are contented with the world of forms. In the same way, hindi natin ma-achieve yung pinaka-ideal na happiness because in reality, that idea of happiness does not exist in the natural world. But instead, we must settle with the examples of our ideas with the examples in the world of forms from the world of ideas. Yan ang sinasabi ni Plato's theory of forms. For Aristotle, we all want to be happy. Aristotle claims that happiness is the be-all and end-all of everything that we do. Sabi ni Aristotle, lahat ng bagay na ginagawa natin sa mundong ito ay para sa ating kaligayahan. Nag-aaral ka ngayon para sa kaligayahan mo in the future. Nakikinig ka ngayon para sa kaligayahan mo in the future. Nagsasalita ako ngayon, nagdi-discuss ako ngayon para sa kaligayahan ko in the future. We may not realize it, but the end goal of everything that we do is happiness. And that is the good life. Now, there are many theories or there are many social, sociological philosophies that help in the development of science. Plus, marami tayong sociological philosophies that we follow in achieving happiness. In fact, meron tayong mga different sociological philosophies that tells us and help us say kung anong pinafollow natin. Unang-una, materialism. Matter is what makes us attain happiness. One philosophy to look at sociology of happiness is materialism. May mga tao na nasa isip na what makes us happy is the material thing. And that's not bad. Hindi iglas masama yon. Hindi masama na sabihin ng paniniwala mo The sociological philosophy is that materialism is what makes you happy. Kung marami kang bagay sa paligid mo, ay eh yun ang nagpapasaya sa'yo. Meron kang latest iPhone. Meron kang magandang bahay. Meron kang latest Tesla model. Kahit wala pang Tesla sa Pilipinas. Most people are clinging to material wealth as the primary source of the meaning of their existence. Walang masama dito, class. If your sociological philosophy is materialism, that's okay. Because in reality, materialism is actually a good sociological philosophy. If you are trying to achieve good material things in life, then you are still having or searching for happiness. And that is not bad. And that is not a sin for a human person, for a human being. Next, sociological philosophy. Meron tayong kinatawag na hedonism. 
Ang hedonism naman or the end goal of life is acquiring pleasure. According sa hedonism, life is all about obtaining and indulging in pleasure because life is limited. Diba? Merong mga tao, aminin nyo man o hindi, may mga tao na nagsasabi na YOLO or you only live once, di ba? Na laging hinahabol eh, numan, party, pagpunta sa bar, pambababae, o kung ano pa man. And the mantra of this school of thought is eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. Ang hedonism is a sociological philosophy that believes that life is short. Ang dapat nating hanapin sa buhay natin ay happiness through pleasure. And class, hindi rin ito masama. Walang judgment dito. Bakit? Kasi ultimately, according kay Aristotle, lahat naman tayo hinahanap happiness natin. And kung yung happiness mo nagre-reside sa hedonism, then no one can judge you for that. Now, hindi natin pinag-uusapan yung morality, ah. Pinag-uusapan natin, happiness and eudaimonia. Yung pleasure. In, in the case of hedonism. So, hedonism is another sociological philosophy that helps us achieve eudaimonia. Next, meron tayong stoicism. Ang stoicism naman, to generate happiness, one must learn to distance oneself from and be apathetic. According kay Stoicism, ang happiness now ay maa-achieve kung magiging contento ka sa mundong ito. Kung, mag- kung mawawalan ka ng pake sa lahat ng bagay na nangyayari sa paligid mo, ay eh maa-achieve mo ang happiness through Stoicism. For Stoics, happiness can only be attained by a careful practice of apathy. Another sociological philosophy is sto- Stoicism. According sa Stoicism, ang true happiness daw ay maa-achieve lang kung mawawalan ka ng burdens, kung mawawalan ka ng pake sa mga bagay sa paligid mo. In fact, ang isa sa mga practice ng mga Stoics is to expect the worst. For, kasi, kung for example, Meron, for example, nag apply ka sa trabaho, in-expect mo, hindi ka papasa. Wala kang pake. Ah, okay lang. Kan? Alam ko naman, di ako papasa dyan. Wala kang pake, either way. Therefore, naiiwasan mo yung idea o naiiwasan mo yung opposite ng happiness. Kasi apathetic ka eh. Wala, wala kang pake. And in that sense, kahit ano maging resulta, Nung job interview mo, for example, eh magiging contented ka. Kung positive, kung pumasa ka sa job interview, sobrang saya mo. Sobrang elated mo. Kung negative naman, pinrepair mo na yung sarili mo. Kaya in a sense, yung mga stoics or yung stoicism, it focuses on generating happiness through being contented and not caring about what will happen. Next, meron tayong idea of theism. Ang theism naman, most people find the meaning of their lives using God as a fulcrum of their existence. According sa mga theists, ay yung ultimate basis of being happy ay communion with God. In fact, one practice of theists is that Happiness cannot be found in this life. Instead, it is found in the next life with God. Yun ang paniniwala ng mga theists na ang happiness hindi natin mahanap sa buhay na to. Kaya yung hope ng mga theists is life or happiness is in the next life. Next, meron tayong idea ng humanism. Humanism is the freedom of man to carve his own destiny and to legislate his own laws free from the shackles of a God that monitors and controls. Quite the opposite of theism, humanism naman na- naniniwala sa idea na yung happiness ay na-achieve through 
freedom. Free will. Di ba? Sa mga things kasi, sinasabi na kay God, meron tayong predetermined na buhay. Sa humanism naman, ang happiness na achieve dahil meron kang choice to be happy. Meron kang choice to choose what you want to be happy. And ultimately, ito yung pinaniniwalaan ng mga humanists. Ang happiness mo ay ma-achieve mo lang kapag nahanap mo yung free will and the freedom to choose your own decisions. Man is literally the captain of his own ship. Next. The good life is, for example, uh, marami tayong examples of a good life that is a form or that is uh, from ideas of technology. Una-una, easy ways of communication. Technological advancements in terms of medicine, transportation, food products, etc. And it continues to satisfy and continuously satisfies human minds. Good life class comes from science. Happiness is a result of science. And ultimately, we choose our own happiness and all of us are on the same journey and on the same road to find happiness in life. Now, that brings us to Activity 2.1. Activity 2.1, for Aristotle, we all want to be happy. Aristotle claims that happiness is the be-all and end-all of everything that we do. We may not realize it, But the end goal of everything that we do is happiness. There. Now, activity 2.1, we have the following directions. Write an essay from 200 to 500 words on the sociological philosophy that you follow in your daily life. Make sure to answer the following questions in the essay. Number one, what sociological philosophy do you follow? What activities do you do that show that you follow the sociological philosophy? And lastly, why did you choose this sociological philosophy? Class, gagawa po ng essay. Sa loob ng essay na yun, sasagutin yung tatlong tanong na ito. Okay? Okay, balikan lang natin yung kung ano yung sociological philosophy para hindi malito. Ano? Yung sociological philosophy, class, pinag-usapan natin before, eh yun yung materialism, yun yung hedonism, yun yung stoicism, nandun yung theism, And lastly, yun ang uh, humanism. So, ang gagawin class sa activity, mamimili ka po ng isa sa limang sociological philosophy natin na pinaniniwalaan mo sa buhay mo. And gagawa ka ng essay tungkol doon sa pagsagot o sa loob ng essay na yun, sasagutin mo yung tatlong tanong na ito. That concludes lecture number four entitled <coughs> Human flourishing and the good life. Today we talked about the good life. And we talked about sociological philosophies that we follow to achieve the good life. And with that, thank you and enjoy your day. Class, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comment section down below. Or even in our Google Classroom. And even in our group chat in Facebook Messenger. And I will try to answer them as much as I can. Enjoy your day and keep safe. Goodbye class and I really hope that you learned something today.